Hi guys, Des from Folk School War out here and I'm with my three kids. We have Daxton way over there and Alica and Dallas. And today we are going to learn how to make flax bread. Um, so the first, <laughs> first thing that you will need, um, you need sugar, flour, ground flax, um, yeast, eggs, and salt and hot water. Um, and the recipe that we will be using is if you're from Warroad, you probably have one of these. I don't know if you can see it. It is uh, the Women of Zion's cookbook from their centennial. I'm not even sure how old this is, but I've had it for quite a while. And we are using um, a recipe from my grandma, Claudia McFarlane. And um, it actually is printed wrong in here, so I'm gonna make a few changes, but if you do have this one, this is where I'm um, pulling this recipe from. And uh, first thing that we're going to do is wash our hands with warm water and soap. And um, we're gonna pre-measure everything out so that we can just mix it and be ready to go. All right, so following the directions in here, we are going to mix four cups of flour in a big bowl. So can you pour those four cups down in here? This in here? The whole thing. And three quarter cup of ground flaxseed. The whole thing and two tablespoons of yeast. Pour it in there. And then he is going to mix that up. I'll take these, you mix those up, try to keep it in the bowl. Okay, and then in another bowl, a little bit smaller, she's going to crack two eggs in here. Okay, Dallas will crack one. Okay, take a little break now. She's also going to add half a cup of sugar and three teaspoons of salt. Good job. And then she's going to mix those three things together. Oh, good job. You okay. can. Then when she has that all mixed up really nice, she is going to add three cups of hot water. And I don't really know why it needs to be hot water, but my grandma always says that that's the way to do it. So. Flaxes in there nice. I want to do it. Hot water in that egg. Is it all going to fit in here? Well, I hope so. Oops. Keep going. You just got to pour the whole thing. There you go. It's not going to fit. It's okay. It lasts a little bit. That's all right. But this one is. Is it all the way down? Okay. So now it says to combine these two mixtures. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you get the good. Whoa. And stir. I'm going to stir it. Don't use that. I'm going to stir it. You can start and then go will continue. I don't want it. I'm going to pour it and mix it up. Did you mess it up? Yeah. I don't know. Okay, Alka's going to gonna stir for a little while. Now, as she's stirring, we're going to combine four more cups of flour in with this one. It's right now really like more like a batter. Let me show. It's um still really wet and sticky, so we're going to 
add more flour till it feels well it'll be too hard to use a spoon you'll have to start kneading it um, so we're just going to slowly add one cup at a time now it's going to be part. we're going to sprinkle this one in don't put it all in just put a just, little bit in at a time yep no <laughs> like shake it in there like this there's one let me fill up another, fill up another one Usually after two, it's a little bit hard. And I actually usually do this at a shoulder. Not yet. It'll be way too sticky to use your hands right now. Just pour it in, bud. Yeah, yeah. yeah. sure. Break up. And number three next. Now, before you stick your hands in there, Alka, I'm going to have you pull your hair back so you don't get hair in there. Well, not yet. And this would be the time to take rings off if you have any rings. You can tell it's getting a little bit harder for her to stir up, so I'm going to mix it once really quick here. You know, it's getting a little bit thicker. It's not quite so cake batter-like. Um, go that in there, bud. That much, and then after that, you'll probably have to use your hands. Just wait now, let her get that mixed in. And the fourth cup, I always add in pretty slowly. We did about half this time, and then another half. Um, and then once you start using your hands, and the, the table will flip it out onto our countertop here. Um, it just gets to be pretty tough. You'll have to start using your hands and kneading it. But you also don't want to get too much flour in there, um, or it just won't be nice and light and fluffy after it's baked. Mm -hmm. it's, don't put your Why don't you pour the rest of that in there, bud? Good job. Okay. Now you can start using your hands. Can you put this back in the pantry, please? Without spilling it, it's not closed all the way. This one is sticky. Isn't it? That's good. It's right by the sweet cereal. Okay. Why don't you stand up on the chair? I'll kind of be a little bit easier for you to punch it. Remember, you spread your knuckles instead of your fingers. Because you want to get it. And fold it in on itself if you want. Alright. Let's add a little bit more in your hands so you can get some off of your hands. And then let's flip it out onto the table. Okay. Yeah. Hey. Don't climb up here. Off um, the counter. I can't. Yeah, Mom, can you can get on the chair. You can go get another chair, please. Alka's look at her hands. She can't do it right now.
Actually feels really nice I'm right gonna now. It with one finger. With your dirty fingers. Wash your hands in there. Mm. They're not even dirty. See? Oh, go wash them. I can't see the germs. Okay. All right, so you can kind of see it's not really sticking to my hands anymore. It's not super sticky. Um, it's in a nice, warm, round ball. Um, and I did not use all of that last cup of flour. Maybe like a third of it. Um, and so it'll, I think it'll just depend upon what type of flour um, and how warm it is. Uh, you want it to stay warm. You want it, you want it to be warm the entire time um, so that the yeast is working and then it's rising properly. So, I'm going to take this bowl back that we had it in originally. Um, I'm going to put it back in there and I am going to cover it with a flour sack towel. If I have a clean one. Um, I'm just going to cover it. I'm going to set my timer for 15 minutes and then I'm going to knead it again. Um, so we'll be back after 15 minutes. All right, so our 15 minutes has passed. I'm going to uncover this. I'm going to knead it all down again, kind of punch it down. Um, and then we are going to let it rise for another 15 minutes. Um, and then when that 15 minutes is done, then we'll um, put it into loaves or buns or whatever you're going to do with it. Today I'm going to teach you how to do a loaf and a few buns. And then we're also going to make caramel rolls out of this. All right, so it has been another 15 minutes, and now we are going to take our rising bread out of the bowl. We're going to cut it. Um, normally, I would cut it into four pieces, equal pieces, and then create four loaves of bread from there, but we're going to do it just a little bit differently today. So um, we're going to make some buns, we're going to make a loaf, and we're going to make some caramel rolls. So... Uh, first, we will start with the loaf and the buns. So we're going to take it out of here. See, it's nice and um, it's getting a little bit bigger. I'll cut it in half. Save this half for the rolls. This half, we'll cut in half again. And we'll start with um, a loaf. So don't don't pull it apart like that. You just want to knead it in again. Make sure all of the air bubbles are out. It's a little sticky, yeah. We saw that air bubble come out. And then, so you're going to try to get it along a little bit. So before I started the um, camera again, I sprayed my loaf pan with some cooking spray. Um, and then I also did just a little round pan for um, some rolls. Okay, so once that's, that's good and open. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to make it a little bit longer. 
There's no air bubbles in there. We're going to put that right into the loaf pan and um, let that continue to rise. So then you're just going to take little balls of the other one. Make sure again. Um, okay. There's no air bubbles in there. Just and then place those in your pan. They are going to continue to rise. So you don't want to have them super duper close together or you'll just have one big pan of bread. All right, so now we are going to move on. We did the loaf and we did the buns, and we're going to move on to the caramel rolls. So we have the other half of our bread dough right here, and we have um, an eight by 10, I think, I don't even know what this is. Yeah, it's an eight by 11, actually. Um, so, because I don't have any cream, I'm going to mix um, some soft butter and milk together um, to just get it nice and creamy and thick. Um, so let's pour that one in there. And a little bit of milk. Uh, if you have cream, it is much better. Use this one. Is the butter hot or just the bowl? It's just the bowl. Okay. You can mix that around as much as you can. You don't want it to be hot. Grab the other side. So, add in some milk. You want to cover the whole bottom of the pan. Um, this is not supposed to be healthy. So, lots of sugar. Some butter. Okay. Another thing I realized that I did not have, um, I don't have any brown sugar. So I just used white sugar and some molasses, mixed it around. Nice. Um, please don't do that. And I'm just going to add that in. You can make it as sweet as you want it. Um, so we're just going to mix this in here. Alf is going to continue to stir it. If you feel like you want more, you can add um, cinnamon and sugar, you can add maple syrup, you can add um, just about anything that you want. And it looks like you might have to add a little more sugar. You want it to be pretty thick. Um, have much for maple syrup left, but I'm going to add a little bit of that in there. Um, I might even cheat and use some fake syrup. Butter rich syrup. Just to make it thicker, um, more caramel like. I guess. Um, so once you're done with that part, um, you're going to take your countertop, you're going to spray it down with some more um, cooking spray, and then I'm going to take a rolling pin and we're going to flatten it out into a nice big square so we can sprinkle um, cinnamon and sugar on uh, along with some butter and then roll it up, cut it into slices, and put them in your pan.
We're going to cover, we're going to let it rise for 60 minutes. We'll pop it in the oven. Um, they are, they'll they all bake at different um, times. So I usually set my timer at this point for 30 minutes. So then about halfway through, I remember to turn on my oven. Um, otherwise I would be the one that let it, lets it rise for 60 minutes and my oven's not hot. So I'm going to turn mine on for 30 minutes, set my oven to 350. Let me double check that. Yes, 350. And then we'll take it from there. All right, so I just um, turned my oven on to 350. Um, and I just wanted to quick show you what they should be looking like. Um, so it's starting to rise, getting a little bit bigger, and keeping them covered. Um, again, told you those were going to stick together. So we're still letting these rise for another 30 minutes. Um, covered. And then kind of the same with the caramel rolls. Look at those. They look so yummy. Um, and they smell really good already. So again, 30 more minutes, then we're going to pop them in the oven. And um, the loaves you will leave in for about 35 minutes. The rolls are about 25. Um, and I know that my my oven works a little bit differently than my grandma's. She has an electric one, I have a propane one. Um, so I think it just kind of depends. Just really watch it those last, like once you get to like 20 minutes with rolls, um, 20 to 25 minutes and then the loaves will be about 10 extra minutes added on to what um, little rolls or buns would be. Um, now your cinnamon rolls are going to be right about in the middle between those. Um, so uh, you'll want to take those out about five minutes before you take your loaf out. So um, that's the last step and so after 30 more minutes I'll pop these in the oven um, and then within the next 30, 35 minutes, I'll have everything else out and, um, I will post or I will take another video, um, when we get to that point. So as of right now, uh, it's just waiting and that's, the, my grandma calls these her two, this is her two hour bread recipe because really from start to finish, including this hour of wait time, it takes about two hours. Um, two hours and 15 minutes maybe once you're, um, you know, including mixing and all of that kind of stuff. So that's where we're at right now. And um, yeah, that's just where we're at. So I will... Um, See you again when everything is out of the oven. All right, so I just took everything out of the oven. We have our loaf of bread here. We've got our pan of buns here. We'll just flip them out. Flip them back over. And what I like to do just to kind of keep them a little bit moist um, is spraying them with some cooking spray. Again, if you have like the real butter one or an olive oil, um, those are some of my favorite ones. And just spritz the top, tops of them so they don't get really dry. And then, whew, um, I like to keep them covered again with that same towel, uh, just to keep them nice and warm until you're going to eat them, um, Definitely, it's so good to eat this warm with just a little bit of butter on it or none at all. I'm not a big butter person. Um, so that's how I like to eat it. Um, it's hot. Okay. Okay. See, they, look, they know when it's done. They come. Um, so what I like to do is I actually um, like to get some tin foil and lay it out and flip the caramel rolls um, onto that as well. So we get them out of this pan, they stop baking, and then the gooey side is up. So I have my tin foil. I'm going to just put it down on my countertop. I'm going to flip the rolls over there. It's probably going to make a mess. So. Um, that's just how it goes. Mm, 
smells like caramel. So you can see nice and gooey on the bottom, super hot. I will probably take some more foil, wrap it over the top, um, and fold these corners up a little bit so that all of that goodness, gooey goodness stays inside there. Um, you can leave them in the pan too if you really want to, but these go pretty quickly at my house. So really no need for that. Um, so we have our buns, our bread, and our caramels. So it is nap time in our house. And that is all I have for you. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, post pictures if you decide to make this recipe. Um, Email me questions if you have a question on anything. If I, if I was not very clear on something, please let me know. Um, this bread is delicious and it's super easy. Um, so I hope you enjoy it and I hope you enjoy eating that homemade bread after you make some for yourself.